Hello everyone, namaste. This is Suma from Austin. Uh, I would uh, like to pay my gratitude to Ramashra Pritamaha Patriji and the family and uh, the Parin Patri everyone. And uh, I want to uh, say this thing uh, for the Mahila Dhyana Maha Chakram. And um, my meditation journey, uh, I'm going to share with you. So it started around two years back. Um, this was uh, not a good entry to spiritual uh, world or uh, you know meditation. So I, I'm an engineer by profession and I'm a mom and uh, I'm a homemaker. So um, my life was very pretty normal as everyone says, like we have a job and we have everything working, we want to live a comfortable life. But uh, Two years back, like uh, I met with a terrible, terrible situation where I lost my dad. Um, so I was his everything and he was my soul. I have seen my life through his eyes and through his uh, life experiences. So uh, as I lost him, I was totally disconnected to this world. And uh, that is the first time I felt what is pain, uh, how it affects you. A person's loss in your life, it completely takes away, even if you are around 100 people, but still you feel alone and uh, you feel orphan in the world when you have no loved ones uh, in your life. So that is where I went into a terrible um, sadness stage, I could say. So it was a total disconnect from my uh, kids, family, work and I used to go to work and I used to work so much that I don't want to get into this uh, reality the truth of my dad is no more with me so I was trying to run away from pain so I was trying to run away from the reality so uh, this continued for a long time and uh, I asked um, many of my doctors uh, suggested like uh, I need to start my therapy um, and maybe I should go for an antidepressant pills. So that is when I uh, started researching about uh, therapists and uh, met few therapists and uh, interviewed them. So that didn't go well. Those therapists were just listening for the sake of their profession. No one was trying to really help me. Um, then I met my one of good friend and I explained her about uh, the situation I was going through, uh, Swapna. Um, she's also from Austin, one of the masters. And uh, she took me to, uh, she said like, uh, you need to go and uh, meet her, uh, know more about the meditation. So meditation was some word we hear like uh, people when they are like uh, at the end of their life, the journey has been uh, peacefully done. That is when uh, people get into meditation. That is what the conventional idea, but um, no idea about what is meditation. How do you do? Why do you do? So I went to Jotsna's home and she had a beautiful pyramid uh, built in. So uh, she was so welcoming and she said like, uh, you can stay here how much ever time you want. And I was thinking like, I cannot sit without a digital or uh, without uh, entertainment for more than 10 minutes by myself. It, it, it used to be like how much we are attached to the digital world. So when I just went and sat in the pyramid and I was thinking maybe 10 minutes I will leave and I'll go back. So I sat there just like it was simple. I didn't know how to sit. I didn't know how to do meditation. So that is when I started doing uh, uh, just a simple close my eyes and observe the breath. Um, so it was like a profound uh, effect and I burst open into tears. I don't know how long I was in tears. I started feeling like a very life changing kind of experience in that 45 minutes, which felt like I was there uh, for an eternity. And um, the day I came out of that meditation is the day I started 
feeling very different and wanted to discover exactly what was going within me uh, while under that pyramid and what, what did happen to me. So I completely changed and uh, um, wanted to know more. And I started like, didn't want to know meditation from anyone. I wanted to discover my own definition of meditation. So I started uh, listening to Patrice's uh, uh, you know, sessions and uh, all the masters of uh, videos on YouTube and um, many masters were taking sessions. So I just joined in there and started hearing all about their experiences and everything. Then I started slowly reading books. So just not, uh, um, you know, this is the first time I'm a very ardent book book and I love reading. So this is the first time I joined uh, reading spiritual books. So that was very new to me. So it was like, say, talking about the souls, talking about uh, uh, people, consciousness, spirituality. And I was like, OK, uh, this is a different dimension that I have never explored. So going into the uh, book reading sessions, attending, I slowly started seeing changes in my life uh, from day to day to a profound effect of, of like, my dad is no more to my dad is watching me as an angel guarding me. And this is the cycle of the life. Everyone should come do their uh, part of like why they are here. So I always like watching movies or uh, uh, hearing about who am I, who am I? So I had that question like everyone should have. So instead of asking who am I, I started questioning why am I here? Uh, if I have come here, there should be some reason. There is a purpose for my life here. Uh, there should be not like a monotonous life where you live, die. No, there is something I have been sent here uh, to perform uh, what is meant to be. That is when I started slowly um, processing all the things that I'm hearing from masters and the sessions in the books. So when I go to work, I was like, slowly achieving something like a, a positivity, a positivity of believing everything will be good, everything should be good, and uh, hoping positive thoughts and giving positive thoughts to everyone. So how, how I turned into so positive is like, a, it's a funny thing, like I had all this question is like, why, why all this, uh, uh, you know, not so good intention people will be given so much power, they will be in a way like they could change their uh, whole world by their decisions. So why those people will be having power? So I then discovered like the positivity of uh, willpower. Uh, let it be like, if you have a strong willpower to achieve anything, could be positive or could be negative. So it's all within you, how you could pursue every situation. So that is when I started saying like, okay, so I have a power to pick positive side and the negative side. When I can pick my positivity, I should see the positive side of every person. So that is when I realized, okay, every coin has a positive and negative. What I want is like what, I expect in the same mirror. So when I treat someone with uh, love and compassion, that is what is coming back. So I started seeing everyone a mirror image of what I am. So a positive person. So started picking all the positive things from every person. The silliest thing is like, I am, I'm always with the speaking about the values of the people. They should believe that they should do all good. So this is what I was in an inhibition of like, uh, oh, the whole world should be the same. So in that, I used to work for so many software companies. I was like, no, this is not the place for me. Like people do not have same values as I expect, or they do not have the uh, same ideas of ideology to believe and uh, uh, run the company. So I used to go, like I worked for 12 software companies and um, I go everywhere and I see same people, same uh, situations, everywhere it's same. So um, don't, don't 
think like uh, it's greener on the other side. So it's better uh, you guys start living the reality and see like every person has positivity. So we start um, try getting only the uh, good things from the other side. So let it be your workplace, let it be your husband, kids, your spouses, family, your uh, religion. So there is no one religion. Every religion has its positivity and some negativity. So why you want to enhance those negative parts in you so that you, you know, levitate around the negativity. So the more you think, the more you practice, that is how a positive um, ideology uh, will follow your life. So doing that, I went to uh, following simple things like from morning to evening, a simple uh, gratitude of saying like, hey, thank you. Thank you for making my day good. Even for your kids, thank you for being so nice. And small uh, things of gratitude, saying thank you. Even people who are not nice to them, say thank you because that is when you see like they bring something goodness in them. And when they challenge you, it's not they are actually challenging you. It's the idea of like uh, they are the same behavior they want to see in others. So that is how uh, you start seeing the small changes. So books, reading books, that is where uh, you see all the situations, how many masters go through, many people that experience in everyday life. So I can give you one example. So where the gratitude, where the positivity work for a person, there was a guy called uh, Travis Roy. He was a ice skater and uh, he got paralyzed while playing uh, hockey, ice hockey. And um, suddenly he, he felt like, oh my gosh, my world ended because his legs, his hands, everything was paralyzed. So he felt like, why, why God punished me? What did I do wrong? And he was so bad in a position of like suicidal thoughts and he didn't want to live that uh, better than life. Then slowly his one side of a uh, body started working. He was with a group of people in the hospital. He made friends and was thinking like, uh, why, why I am here, why I should be playing uh, a professional hockey, I should be skating, uh, this should not happen to me. So that is when he met a girl, uh, Catherine, and uh, she was so positive person, even she had no arms or legs, and she was giving away party of uh, being alive. And uh, he got so confused, like, who throws a party for being alive? She accident and that is when she lost she's thankful and she sees the positive side of being alive not like totally lost paralyzed but still she is so positive and happy um so that is when he uh you know he realized like there could be very bad things but today is a better day so that is when he started uh you know uh, being grateful, being thankful that one arm works, one leg works, so he can be able to pick food and eat. So small positivity and uh, being grateful, the gratitude is very important in life, how we apply. Uh, we may think like, oh my gosh, the other's life is so beautiful, why, why me? So instead of thinking like, why me, why others are good, stop like comparing. Uh, so that is that is when one thing I realized, stop comparing and competing. So all you have to is like, look at yourself and say like, I am best and I need to be best. So that is when you start competing to within you, to the person inside you. So when you stop complaining about all they have but you don't have that is when you'll see like the potential of a real person within you so when you explore who you are uh what are your strengths that is when you stop uh judging people so when you stop judging you will realize like uh oh there is no point of uh, expectation so 
when you stop judging that is when you see a person who is uh, you know behaving bad to you can go through a very terrible tough life so they may need more love so uh, the best thing is like okay if someone says something back to you just say like maybe he didn't have a good day uh he's going through some trouble just say to yourself and move on so no judgment and no expectations so these are the small things i started reading from a book so there is a uh, books i have read like alchemist the biography of a yogi uh then the yogananda many masters many life these books give you a different way of living so all this was happening uh, when I met Patriji. He came to Austin. That is when I saw him for the first time. I had millions of questions. It was so tough. These were the questions that bugged me for life. And I was like, okay, I should ask him everything. These are the solutions for my uh, whole existence. I have so many questions. And for every complicated question, the elaborate questions, it had a simple answer, a very straight one line answer. I was like, wow, so life is so simple. Like who is complicating it? Like why we are complicating it so much? So that is the day I realized. I started writing down like, who's making the situation tougher? So I started writing like, what is the situation? Who are the people around me who are causing it? By the end of the root cause uh, for my problem was me. It's it's me who is creating all that soreness to me, all that pain to me. If Patricia says like, uh, don't overthink it, don't analyze it, just just breathe and observe your breath, and that is the answer. So that was the simplest solution for every problem I had. So I started spending more time with me. So the meditation, sitting yourself, I started enjoying myself alone. So that is the time I could see like who, I, who really I am inside and who really I'm outside was totally different. I could say like how we have developed everything with the education, with the society around you, the learning you have done is different from the person who is inside you. So slowly I started understanding who really I am. So then um, that is when I said like, okay, I am the master of my life. I have the power to make my own destiny, uh, to make my own happiness. And uh, I am the master of all the problems that come to me that Every problem comes to you because I stop thinking like, oh, why it always happens to me, not every person, only me. So then I stop thinking, why me? And I said like, okay, I need to learn something from this situation. So every tough times or the trouble times I was going through, I started asking like, should I learn something? So I am put in this situation because the masters want to teach me something. So I started, okay, thank you for this trouble. Let me start learning. So I wait with patience and it just like every trouble should have a solution. That is your patience and your uh, time it takes to pass on. So it's just like a passing cloud. The experiences in your meditation are just passing clouds. They just come, you don't overanalyze, you go through it and it goes away. So just like that, every trouble, hardship in your life, it's just a passing cloud. It comes, you, know, you need to learn the lesson why you are here and why you were put into there and just move on. So don't ever think like, why me? All the problems, it's there because you are potential of uh, solving it. So, and learning a lesson. And I was always thinking like, there should be something else because the spiritual world is, there is no uh, a, a class for it. There is no uh, person, your parents or school doesn't teach you the spirituality. I never knew like what exactly is spirituality. Do I know everything? No, I'm still learning. So that is where you start working towards your uh, journey of books journey of listening to masters 
journey of listening to um, different kinds of our talks, um, just go to PMC or uh, PSSM on the YouTube and start watching their videos. Every master has their own journey, own life, own experiences that teaches them in a different way what is spirituality. So I said like, okay, so everyone has their own life story to be written. So I had to discover my own story. That is when I got the opportunity uh, to be part of Inner Journey. So that was a beautiful program. And uh, uh, I met for, uh, for 55 days, I met so many masters and the uh, uh, immense sharing of uh, knowledge that was uh, tremendously uh, knowledgeable and uh, very informative to you know understand to a common person like me. So to understand and practice that for 55 days, it went through a different uh, dimension of uh, science. Uh, I could say spirituality is one kind of a science that needs to be more discovered, uh, more spread across because this is the roots of your life uh, for your better life happiness, the way you pursue your family, uh, the way you uh, present yourself at work, your efficiency, it all depends on the spiritual science. It's not like uh, I asked Patriji, it was so funny, Patriji, I'm an engineer today. I have a beautiful family. Uh, if I want to be spiritual, do all this, and uh, you know, go to Himalayas. So Patricia said, like, no, you just need to take care of your kids and do your work and just pursue meditation. It's just observe your mm -hmm. breath. You don't need to go to any Himalayas or mountains. Just sit with your family. This whole journey is your journey along with your family. So you bring them wherever you go. So that is the day I started like, okay, so my family is part of me. So it's my responsibility. It's my acquired love and uh, relationship that I need to be taking them with all through my journey. So that is when I started pursuing uh, what makes me happy and uh, how I can be happy. So I felt like when my dad left, like it didn't, it didn't, affect any universe if it didn't affect anyone anyone's life but for the loved ones it affected a lot so i realized like i'm a no one i'm a nobody in this universe but i'm everything to my loved ones so i with that small intention of everything to my loved ones then i said like okay i need to spread love even the other person is ignorant and uh, doesn't care about me I started pursuing like spreading good vibes, uh, spreading uh, knowledge and uh, trying to help everyone, trying to tell them about meditation, even if they don't care, even if they are like uh, thinking like, okay, uh, meditation is something that's not for us. But I made sure like I told them, hey, there is something we need to pursue. So maybe one day, uh, we will come to know like as food is important for this physical body and being alive. Meditation is so important for your soul and for your better happiness. The day you start bringing this of uh, spreading this meditation, the beautiful words of Patricia, it says like, I can do it. I will do it. I must do it. And I am doing it. So these four words made such a uh, influence on me. Like, yes, it, I started applying on everything with the situation I am talking with the kids uh, in the world and uh, even at um, home or with the friends. So every situation I said, like, I must do it. So um, there is no problem that has a no, no solution found, but there is always a different way to do if there is, you are hitting a dead end. That is when I said like every person should have three things they should pursue is like uh, a hobby, a sport, and a job. So a hobby can be your the painting, the dancing, 
are uh, you know playing uh, instruments, the music, anything. Uh, sport can be like you just take a ball and play with your kids or your friends and uh, badminton, anything. You don't need to be in you know, the Olympics or you know to be, you need to be a professional. So and a job, job being a mom, being a homemaker, being an engineer, doctor, anything, anything that makes a good a earning, a earning for your uh, livelihood should be a must. Being a mom and a homemaker is the toughest job in the world. So you should be proud of that. Um, I encourage all the women, make meditation a part of your life. It's as important when you have self-love for yourself, uh, within you, that is when your positive energy exuberates so that the people around you could see your self-love. When you love yourself, that is when you can love the others as, uh, as you like yourself. So, so start uh, putting the effort, uh, so self-development, meditation, loving each other, uh, spreading meditation and uh, being positive and ignoring. Ignore the negativity around you. Ignore even the people uh, who are being, um, you know, not good to you. Just ignore. We don't, we don't want the negative vibes from anyone. When you say that ignorance is bliss, yes, that's true. Try practicing it. Now I have come to a position. Even someone is ignoring me, I cannot notice it. So other people will say like, don't go on spreading your knowledge uh, without people asking you then there is no value for your knowledge. I said like, people judging my knowledge will not, not make me a very knowledgeable person or it won't take my knowledge away. So the best way is like, do not get into someone's negativity, do, do not get into someone's uh, business that is not good for anyone. So just be happy, ignore the negativity, spread positivity, meditation, and you have to be gratitude, write a three people, three things you are gratitude about. Every week, three things, write it and stick it on your fridge or on a notepad in, in front of you. Just stick it there and see like the friends, the family, the food, the health. There can be something you should be thankful for, the gratitude, practice gratitude. And uh, always be uh, smiling because the smile, is the way like where your soul says like everything is okay, we can do it and we can deal with it. So uh, nothing is impossible uh, when you have a confidence of like uh, meditation is the way your soul is with you. Don't expect any love, any support. Let it be financially, uh, psychologically. Don't expect anything from anyone, even if they are just with you. Say thank you for even staying with you. Pay the gratitude. Um, try to follow a sattvic life and enjoy every day. So you will see the difference. And please read the books. Um, watch the videos. Hear to the masters and uh, participate uh, in, in any of uh, Dhyana Mahalingam. And uh, there will be uh, many groups, many people want to teach you. If you are in need of a knowledge and you are thriving to know more about spirituality, there is so much resources in PSFM, uh, PNC, and so many ways you could be reached. And they all are so many volunteers trying to help you, trying to spread the beautiful process of meditation to betterment of the humankind. So let's all uh, come with this one aim um, of spreading meditation, practicing meditation, and you know, we are the next generation examples. We need to set the next generation future to a better life by spreading this spirituality. Just observe your breath and do meditate. Thank you.